The Deep Web I see a lot of people interested in the deep web these days. Mainly teens. People talking about red doors and many other alternative names to things they think are real but haven't seen themselves. People question it every day. Are these red door events real? Do they really happen? They are very real indeed. Unfortunately, people with sick minds who get off on torture and other abnormal things go searching for these red doors, and when they find them, they dish put in great amounts of money just to control the show. The shows are usually hosted by someone from the Middle Eastern portion of the world. It's always a dark-skinned person hosting the show with their faces covered by cloth or a mask. The hosts always seem to be in a pissed-off demanding mood and always seem to be under the influence of some type of drug or booze. I am going to tell you the experience I had once when going deep into the deep end of the web. Some of you may have heard of it. But I can't get there. You can't get there with Tor. Tor is infested with law enforcement. Red doors won't show up on the onion anymore like they used to. The only way you can get to see a red door show is through the shadow web. And to get to the shadow web you need an anonymous server which is called s.k.ix. It's like the new Tor but without the law enforcement. The world is a much more cruel place nowadays in the cyber world. As a recently retired FBI agent who specialized in cyber crimes all around the world, I am here to share a story of what I saw on one of my last cases before I retired. The case was never closed and got passed to the agent who replaced me. This was four months ago. I was working on a case that had been opened up through an anonymous complaint we had received online. The complaint was lengthy and in detail described and mentioned many acts of torture beyond what I had seen in my time with the agency. The tipster had sent screenshots of what he or she had seen one night while digging deep into the deep web. They explained how they had been a regular on the deep web but how everything was dying out due to LE that they wanted to dig deeper. So they found the shadow web. The process of becoming a member of the shadow web was lengthy. The person claimed it took them up to two weeks before they were granted access after paying. Finally the email they were expecting came in and they were granted access after installing SKIX. This was the new software slash program that would allow them to access the shadow web servers. Little did they know what they were getting themselves into. I won't go into detail as to what they mentioned in their report because it is still under investigation due to the person being murdered in their own home by an unknown. This is where I will mention my experience as part of my personal investigation. I was given a link to the shadow web by the recently deceased. With permission from the big head, I was able to sit down and proceed. I took the security precautions and paid the fee. It took the shadow web admin two days to send the email allowing me access. In the email, they prompted me to join as many as four live sessions that were going throughout the week. One of them was called, Shark Bait, another was called, Shit Serial, the other two are too gross to mention. The shadow web entrance that I was given was a portal to about 10 other websites through the shadow web. The websites didn't have names, they were named by numbers in a 1 to 10 list. There were about a 100 other websites on the bottom but mainly were all under construction. On the main page, it showed the times and dates of the four shows they were going to be broadcasting live on the shadow web through a stream. There were archives that began in March of 2015 and ended on August 23rd. These archives were of previous live streams that had already happened. I decided to take a look. The one that I chose was called, Salted Snail. I did not really know what to expect before clicking it. Judging by the name, I thought there had to be a snail involved. There wasn't. I clicked the link, it took me to a brown page with an ad and the video behind the ad. The ad started with a clown laughing, he then says, not so fast, you have to go through me before you see what you came to see. He reminded me of, Captain, Spaulding. He had severed heads in the background, his face was painted and smeared, his clothes were splattered with bloodstains. In the ad, 
he encouraged viewers to come to join one of the next sessions coming up and to pay the fee to see the fun unfold. He mentioned that the viewers were in charge and that they were in control of what happened to the sadistic victims. He then looked closely into the camera and said, it's going to be one hell of a show. The ad ends. The video is now available to play. The video was titled, Salted Snail. The video begins. No, credit. It has just begun. You see the clown again walking out from behind a white curtain that has what looked like shit or old blood smeared all over it with a light behind it. His face is painted, and he is naked. He walks out of the curtain, chuckling to himself and smiling, scratching his ass and balls. Then he walks towards the camera and shakes his penis in front of the camera and announces how happy he is to see new members. He then goes on a 30-second rant about law enforcement and how they can catch him and how he is in the US and how he lives next door to a state trooper and how they will catch him, thanking all of his friends in China. I'm guessing hackers who keep him anonymous. After his rant, he then says the show is scheduled to stream for 15 minutes, so he has to stick to the schedule because he is very very hungry and hasn't eaten in the past two days, he then flashes his ribs at the camera. He wasn't that skinny. He then asks everyone watching if they are ready for the show. A lot of people responded in the side chat box, yes. He reminds everyone that he is in control of this show. Not the viewers. He then chuckles and says, I'll be right back. He goes behind the curtain, then rolls out a black barrel and places it in front of the camera. He then walks around the barrel knocking all around it with his fist as if knocking on a door. He then kicks it hard with his heel. You can hear something in the barrel. He then grabs what seems like a flat head screwdriver and pries open the barrel. You can see a head full of hair as the lid opens. A girl, sitting there, alive. He then yells at her in, Chinese, to stand up. She can barely stand. His body is so soggy from what I assume was the water that she was in. He then looks at the camera and says, doesn't she look delicious? Delicious as cake. The girl had her hands tied behind her back and her mouth was bound with multiple layers of cloth. She looked too weak to scream, too weak to escape or even attempt. She just stood there, from what seemed to be like if she was accepting her death. Then the clown went behind the curtain and came back out with a knife and a razor. He then got in front of the camera and said, I love me some Chinese food. It's dinner time. The girl then turned to him and looked at him and he nodded at her and said, yes, yes, it's time. Her eyes opened wide. She tried to scream but couldn't. He then teased her, poking at her with the knife. She began to bleed instantly from the poking. She was extremely soggy. Then he showed off the little razor blade and proceeded to cut little squares on her shoulder as if cutting a cake piece. Pretty soon he was at the other shoulder, then her chest, breast, and stomach. The scene was extremely garish and violent. Almost as if filleting a fish. By the time he was finished with her body, he had a plate filled with her skin and tissues. What seemed like a plate full of soggy skin. The girl was still alive. Her body looked like it had been eaten by piranhas. The only things remaining were her breasts and her face and hair. He then took the plate behind the curtain and brought back another plate. He then looks at the camera and says, well look at that, doesn't she look great? You can she may have lost a couple of pounds, huh? He then winks at the camera and laughs. He proceeds to cut off the girl's ears and lips. What looks now like a mutilated body that is still alive left me wondering what he had done to other people in the past. I was enraged and extremely disturbed by what I had seen. The finale showed the clown coming out of the curtain with two containers of salt. He then poured the salt off over her body where her skin had been cut off. He poured a good amount on her ears and lips too. The girl was suffering, hardly moving but still somewhat standing. He then looks at the camera and says, I bet you motherfuckers thought I was going to kill her, 
didn't you? I am not a murderer. He then pushes her head back down into the barrel and closes the lid. Looks at the camera and says, stay tuned to the next episode, the camera and shows him putting a white tablecloth over the barrel and placing the plate full of soggy flesh on the barrel. He then lights a candle, grabs a fork and a knife, and pulls up a chair. The camera shows him there eating the flesh, while chuckling away and talking to himself. The screen then floods with the words, till the next episode, over and over and over with some circus music playing in the background. The camera then dims as it shows him there eating and laughing away. The black screen shows the words, offline. I immediately became concerned for the girl. She was Asian. The clown clearly looked American or sounded American at least. He really resembled Captain Spaulding from The Devil's Rejects or House of a 1000 Corpses. I am assuming that is what he was trying to be or act like. I contacted my chief and had a personal meeting with him and explained everything about what I had seen. He then laughed and said, Ah you have seen him huh, that evil fucking clown on the internet. He has been around since the late 90s doing these shows. He seems to buy women off the market and then tortures the shit out of them. He then shrugs his shoulders and says, We don't know who he is or where he is located, the Chinese help him keep anonymous. To me this was something new, as an agent who dealt with homicides and piracy, I had never encountered nor seen anything like this. I am now retired and thought I would share this story with Reddit. Everyone should know, the deep web is deep and free. But the shadow web. That is something you don't want to go to. Beware. How well do you know the internet? Until two weeks ago, I thought I knew it pretty well. After all, I spend a good chunk of my day browsing Reddit and 4chan, and I'm always up to date with the latest memes and circle jerks. I've been a denizen of the internet since the early days of Fortune City Pages and IRC channels, and a regular ever since. Then, about a year ago, somebody introduced me to the shadow web, a sort of secret layer of the internet that you will never find by googling or looking up message boards. There are no, in links, from the surface web to the shadow web. And no, this isn't the deep net, in case you were thinking about that. Not some website with gore videos of freak accidents, I've seen those. I assure you this is something far more twisted. I never asked what his name was. He was a regular who came to the gas station where I worked as an attendant last year. Every time he came in, he would buy $20 to $50 of Ucash vouchers, which I assumed were for porn subscriptions. I think it was a combination of his beige polo shirts and a receding hairline that gave off the creepy vibe of a pervert. One day, he asked for $300 of Ucash vouchers, and I made the mistake of raising the question, what for? Have you ever heard of the shadow web? I remember him asking me casually as he counted $300 from a wad of $20 bills. I hadn't, so I shook my head. Then he looked through his wallet and withdrew a little slip, one about the size of a credit card. If you want to find out, he whispered. He leaned towards me and slid the piece of paper into my chest pocket. I gave him his vouchers, he left, and I never saw him again. Not long after, I left the job to return to school. It wasn't until a couple of weeks ago that I came across the old, yellowy uniform with the piece of paper still in the front pocket. When I opened it up and read its content, I immediately recalled my encounter with the creepy customer. The piece of paper had instructions on how to get to the gateway of the shadow web. There were a lot of steps, some more sophisticated than others. Unfortunately, I was both tech-savvy and curious enough to follow them. The first thing you'll want to know about this, shadow web, is that you do not want to go there. I've seen plenty of fucked up things on the web, but nothing comes remotely close to the things I saw on the SW, thinking back, I should have noped the fuck out the instant I saw the front page. I don't know why I hadn't. Maybe something is wrong with me. 
When I got to the gateway page, which resembles one of those welcome pages that pop up when you use the free Wi-Fi at the airport or at the mall, the first thing I noticed was the word corpse fucking. It was underneath a search field among 30 or so other words which I assumed were the most commonly looked up things on the SW, things like skinning and mutilation. That should have been my cue to X out. There were a lot of other things, too, other than sexual content and graphic gore footage. Things like instructions on how to make DIY roadside bombs. Things like Craigslist for cannibals and people who wanted to be eaten by cannibals. Things like a marketplace to buy and sell stolen identities, either individually or in bulk. I spent almost an hour reading up on leaked war documents and diplomatic cables on a site called Avenge.ShadowWeb. The website looked very retro, if you know what I mean. The layout was framed and each frame had its own scroll bar. When I found myself clicking on links without thinking twice, I realized I had become comfortable on the shadow web. Don't ask me how I came across this next website. Curiosity got the better part of me, and I clicked on things I shouldn't have. I'll spare you the actual name of the site because I know some of you will make the same mistake that I did thinking it can't be that bad. It can. When I got there, I noticed the Yukash logo at the bottom of the page, indicating that paid services were available. It was in fact a live webcam show, but you only paid if you wanted to be the director. Viewing was free. Beneath the live feed of a webcam was the login page to a chat room. It prompted me for a screen name and I clicked on the join button, so I entered random letters like I always do when commenting on Pornhub or X videos. As soon as I got past the login, a torrent of messages flooded the screen. Most of the messages were in English, a few were in Japanese, and I think some were Arabic or Farsi. The number of participants in the chat room fluctuated between 150 to 200 people, but that's only the number of people who bothered entering the chat. I suspect many more were watching anonymously. The majority of legible messages were start or gagogo or something to that effect. After about a minute, a man with his face hidden behind a hockey mask appeared on the feed. I remember him having dark brown skin and being really skinny. Like, starving Ethiopian skinny. Shortly after that, everyone was set on mute everyone except for one user by the name of Italian Goat who I figured was the director of this show. That's when the screaming began. She was blindfolded and tied to a wooden chair with her hands behind her back. A bigger, darker man dragged her by the hair until she sat dead center on my screen. I watched her try to struggle free from the ropes, but she was so tightly fastened that you could see the bruising. God knows how long she had been tied up like that. Finally, the bigger man took the blindfold off, and she stopped screaming. When she looked into the camera, she seemed to realize what was about to happen. She started crying and begging the two men in what I think was Arabic. Then a message popped up on the chat. Italian goat, lay her sideways on the floor. The director issued his first command. The skinny man saw the message and related to the bigger man in their own language. Italian goat, kick her in the stomach. The skinny man continued with his translations. Italian goat, kick her in the face. The screaming got louder and louder. What the fuck was I watching? That was it for me. I reached for my cell phone, ready to dial 911. Italian goat, stomp on her tits. Italian goat, tell your friend to kick harder, I paid good money for this. I was in so much shock at this point that I couldn't take my eyes off of the screen. The kicking went on for another 10, 20, 30 seconds. It seemed as if it went on forever. Italian goat, now, slit her throat. When I read that last message, the churning feeling in my guts intensified. No, 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 I kept thinking, somebody stops this. I tried to type into the chat, but the input field was grayed out. The woman cried even louder when she heard the man relay the last request. Italian goat, wait, no, not yet. 
The skinny man held one hand up to signal his partner to halt. My breathing returned to normal, for a second, thinking the woman was spared. At least for the time being. Then the director continued. Italian goat, take out her eyes first. The skinny man stared directly into the webcam. I couldn't see the entirety of his face, just his eyes and the small patch of skin around each one. In his eyes, I searched desperately for the slightest hint of hesitation. Please, put a stop to this, I prayed, but I kept the mouse cursor hovering above the close button in case they did not. And then, the skinny man began typing, and a second screen name popped up on the log. Admin, another $500. My mind froze when I saw the number. $500. This woman was being tortured and possibly killed for a meager sum of $500. I was making as much every other week at the gas station, and I was barely making minimum wage. If I could offer $1,000 to stop this, I would. I would empty out my savings account if it meant saving her life. I would, I swear on my life. I'd pay anything to stop this madness. Italian goat, okay. I quickly shut off the screen before I could see any more. I wish my common sense could have kicked in earlier. I ran out to the yard where I regurgitated about two meals worth of vomit. It had been a long time since I've felt this sick from watching something. When I was in junior high some friends showed me a clip from Rotten.com. It was the one where a man had his skull sliced in half by the rotor blades of a helicopter he was in the midst of repairing. And then, over the years, I've seen many more videos like that one enough that I don't get the urge to puke in my mouth anymore. But let me tell you this, seeing live footage of a real person being tortured is stomach turning on a whole different level. When I was done spitting out the last bits of bile in my mouth, I heard screaming coming from my room. It was then I realized that in my haste to turn the monitor off, I had forgotten to turn the speakers off as well. Her screams got worse and worse until finally, I was able to reach behind the desk and disconnect the speakers from the computer. The silence that followed was unbearable. It was as if by my own hands I had silenced her, killed her. I felt remorse such as I have never felt before. I killed her, I thought to myself again and again. I killed her. The feeling was unreal. I had to find out if she was alive. As I reached over to turn the screen back on, a voice inside my head begged me to stop. I do not want to see what I'm about to see. But before I could stop myself, my hand had already acted. The image on the screen was an image I will never, ever forget. The severed head of the woman sat there straight across from me, both eyes missing from their respective sockets. That face. That warped, misshapen face has haunted me ever since. Even now as I write this, I can feel her hollow eyes glaring at me from behind. I sleep with all the lights on, the TV on, but nothing helps. Right before I shut down the browser and reconfigured the network settings to access the good old regular internet, I remember seeing one last line on the chat line. It read. Admin, thank you for watching. The next show will be in one hour. In order to give context to this post, let me explain who I am and why the fuck I am bothering to share this information. I'm a 22-year-old male, who just finished my master's at university. I was about 12 when I was given permission to start using my dad's spare laptop since his work gave him a new one every couple of years and he thought I could use the experience of getting used to tech early on. When I got into high school I got word from a group of stoners, why the fuck they were talking about it, hell if I know, that people were accessing restricted parts of the internet which held everyone's information. I went ahead and did some more digging online and found out about the dark web, what most of you know as the deep web, finding proxy sites, as well as hacks that you could use via command, prompt to mask your IP address, and basically walk through a lot of locked doors. 
I spent the better part of my late teens doing this kind of stuff online, using a few online forums like Raddot, most of the time, to talk with people who were basically doing the same shit as me. I didn't have many friends offline, so yeah, online was the place for me and I got pretty good at blending in. I had three aliases that I used, but only a close online friend of mine knew that they were all me. Nathan was my main link to the dark web, since he somehow spent more time on it than I did, even when the only thing I did other than ghosting with him was playing Halo with him on my friends list. What I liked about him is that neither of us mentioned our last names or any real information, even though we both could have looked it up at any time and found pretty much whatever we wanted about the other person. That being said, I trusted Nathan more than almost anyone and he knows more about this story than I'll be willing to admit on here. During uni, I roomed with a local dealer who, unknown to the education board that expelled him, worked for me. It was fucking easy to order narcotics online like m.d.m.a and x if you knew where to look, I even had them shipped to my dorm room's local P.O. box at one time without anyone being any the fucking wiser. I'd get the drugs online, my former friend would then use his, real life, connections to sell them since I didn't really have any of my own. This was around the time I felt that I held all the cards and no one could touch me if they couldn't track my IP. I was in the second year of my biomed course when I got into the stupid shit. Scumbag pieces of shit would be sharing snuff videos online that would make even the most messed up pornography you've laid eyes upon look like fucking white bread. This was why I only used links that I either found myself or more often the ones that Nathan gave me. We would spend days, literally days, just marveling at all of the crazy shit which people could get away with. Yeah, the government had shut down the main sites like Silk Road and Mad Onion but those are like the only ones that idiots online seem to ever take notice of. Other hackers would message me on forums asking for sites to get weed and other drugs from, which was as simple as pointing in a fucking direction. The university claimed to monitor internet traffic to stop people from doing freaky shit online after they heard people were hacking student accounts and ruining online schedules, but I guarantee you that they did absolutely nothing to people who were actually doing it. Note, I'm not confessing to having done these acts, I just know exactly which individuals did. By the third year, I had made enough money to have a long screen setup of my own which made decrypting site details a lot quicker for me and I actually had gotten pretty good at it. I had been delving around some messed up sites, and to be honest, I'd even talked in chat rooms to some of the admins in charge of them. You'd be surprised how normal a child pornography site owner would seem if you didn't know that he also had a day job. I got more curious though. Fucking stupid of me. After nearly 10 years of seamlessly making my way around the dark web, deep web is more of a pleb term if you're talking with more experienced users, even today, I joined Nathan as well as a few others in a chat room just fucking about and sharing some screwed up sites. Might sound weird, but for me, it's a pretty everyday thing to do. Nathan and another friend were talking about some site that no one had managed to get past the encryption to apart from one other person who's even more of a no-life than me. The rest of us are pretty sure he's autistic or some shit because the site he shared with us was arguably the vilest thing I've ever laid eyes upon. For those of you still with me, this is why I'm posting this here. This site is the most cancerous and revolting sector from the darkest part of the dark web. It is a scar that I bear to this day and it is one that I will never, ever forget. I'll warn readers again, this is not for the faint-hearted and something that even the most emotionally numb people will not be able to deal with. I won't share the site URL since I don't want this post being taken down, nor do I want anyone even giving it the slightest bit of publicity aside from what I have to say here. That being said, it did have a subheading in the HTML. That I'll leave other people like me to have a look at if they want to. Most people referred to it as cold body. The autistic dude who was in the chat room earlier gave Nathan and I an encrypted URL for us, but he was too fucking giddy about getting through to the site himself to send us encryption, so Nathan and I had to manually go through the whole process ourselves. We tried for hours. Nathan and I had been doing this for the entirety of our adult lives yet we'd never seen code like this before. 
Come to think of it, I doubt that the other guy in the chat cracked this by himself. Nathan and I both called it a night, so I left the command prompt open and went outside to smoke a joint. Nathan remained on the chat so we could play Anvil, a Russian crack of Halo for PC, but when I got back his microphone was muted for some reason. For people like us who had nothing to hide from each other, we almost never muted our mics. I wait a few minutes, thinking maybe he's jacking off or maybe gone to get something. Nothing. I don't think much of it, my brain too occupied with the cannabinoids flowing through my bloodstream. I sat down and took another look through the code, thinking there was something I missed. I did. The code was completely different. Completely unencrypted. I simply launched the URL and my PC word for a while, until finally opening up about 20 windows across my two monitors, all of them scrambling code through a debugger that I had installed. Even with 32 gigabytes of RAM, my computer was making more noise than it ever did doing this kind of stuff. I thought to myself, shit, I'm gonna have to OC my shit in the BIOS if I was going to have a shot of getting through, and I was not feeling up for it after smoking too much. I get ready to hard reset before my monitors turn off and back on one at a time. This was when I started getting a bit paranoid and was thinking about just letting it go. I fucking wish that was what I did. The windows were almost all gone, only four were still there and two of them were normal deep websites that the admin probably used to relay the IP address through. The first site that I had seen did that. All of the text was dark red and extremely primitive for a site that I thought would be at least a little bit more impressive considering its security. The main center window had only a small amount of text on the screen, if you have made it this far, you know what you are in for. If you still don't, you don't belong here. Even though I was feeling mellow, the text and sheer awe of what I was getting myself into pierced me with fear. A simple, Y slash N, prompt popped up in the window. I accepted, ready for whatever awaited me on the other side. A chat room window came to life in the second remaining window. I was wondering what it was for, perhaps another IP relay or a shadow app that hid the true nature of the site behind it. It simply stated, slash, insert name, as well as an optional password that I'm still not sure what was for. The fact that people might have accounts of this kind of site, looking back on it, is fucked up. I used my most recent alias, Diabloxks, the X's are censored for obvious reasons. A couple more scrolls of red text flew up the window, and then it opened up into an actual sort of chat room like you'd see on Omgle or some shit, except with no ads or color or anything besides the dark red text. The chat was a bit more advanced than the first window, which was now frozen and wasn't responding to any console commands I was using on it. I have to say, the feeling of finding this site in the first place felt pretty awesome. I couldn't wait to tell Nathan. That was until the chat window popped up with names. One that I recognized was his, using one of his aliases as well. I'd say about three dozen people were in the chat room, no names that I can remember. And even if I did, I wouldn't dare reveal them. Not after this. I tried calling Nathan on my phone but he obviously wasn't picking up. We were so fucked. It was stupid of us to delve this deep without even knowing what we got ourselves into. Users definitely had met before, as they immediately started posting messages to the window as I and Nathan remained silent. As they were casually talking about stuff, I was starting to calm down a bit. Maybe this was just a stupid exclusive cult website that talked about organizing deals or other dumb shit that I've found in the past. It all seemed so normal, so why all the obscurity? The first window, still blank and unresponsive, suddenly began loading up a video file of some sort. A snuff video, perhaps? It would make sense to hide one but not this extensively and the chat room didn't make much sense. I wish this stuff had been going through my head at the time if I wasn't retarded enough to get stoned before going through with this shit. I felt tempted to ask the other users what the video was about but I was afraid that might give me away as someone who's not supposed to be there. 
Nathan hadn't said anything either so I wasn't going to risk doing something suspicious like that. I got the guts to ask, what are we all here for then you, trying to sound as eccentric and dim-witted as I could. I didn't get a response from them. As a matter of fact, no one said another word. Nathan stayed quiet, but I assumed that he noticed me in the chat as well now that I'd posted. The video had stopped loading and had begun playing. Some more messages from the other users sharing their anticipation as footage of a dark grey basement somewhere took shape on the screen. The resolution for the video was pretty awful at first but rendered pretty well after about 30 seconds. I was scared shitless. No one else was in the house had I share with my roommates, most had left for summer vacation and I didn't head home for another two weeks. I was alone in the dark with little else but the ambient sound of whatever was happening behind the camera in the video. It stays like this for about four or five minutes. I spent every second of it staring at the screen, waiting for something to happen. Finally, a dude steps onto the screen holding up a whiteboard with foreign letters on it as well as the words cold body underneath. The guy was fucking ominous to look at, pretty overweight and what only could be described as a motorbiker's beard. The man spoke. I had no idea what he was saying at first, he was speaking in Chinese I think but I don't really know I'm not a fucking linguist. Luckily for Nathan and me, the man had another person beside him who spoke some broken English. Hello users, welcome cold body show, I think he said. I was honestly more interested than scared at this point, this video looked like it could be something worth showing to the others. That thought never crossed my mind again. The man with the broken English bursts into tears and sobs out of nowhere. He sobs in front of the camera and jerks around in what I can only guess was desperation. The man holding the sign yells at the guy in Chinese before another man enters the frame and puts a gun to his head. Before I could even realize it was a gun the man fired. He didn't stop there. Pressing the barrel of the gun against the dead man's temple he fired again and again, each shot spraying blood and what I guess were pieces of the man's skull all over the place. Okay, so a shocking video, not much out of the ordinary here. That was when I stared at the chat window again. The users were talking about what they should do next. Users were all typing in different languages, but almost all of the English ones that I read said, shoot him again. I realized then that I wasn't watching some shocking video or stupid snuff film that the admins had hid behind a wall of proxies. This was a live stream. I was watching a live stream of people being murdered in front of me. We all were. I type into the chat, you sick fucks, and, what the fuck are you guys doing, but the texts weren't responded to because so many people were spamming the chat with foreign text I couldn't read. Another person is brought out in front of the camera, this time already sobbing and trying to break free of the ropes that had been bound around her ankles and wrists. She was bare naked and covered in bruises and cuts. I didn't do anything but wait for the inevitable. The man shot her in the head and watched her body fall limp to the floor. People in the chat cheered and asked for more. Someone picks up the camera and positions it in a different direction towards a metal table covered with some sort of bin liner. The woman's body was dragged by the hair into the frame and placed on the table. What happened next? I don't think the world should know. I am not kidding. This is your final warning. The body was slumped on the table like a surgeon would do before operating on a person. Some more people, wearing red and black ski masks, went up to the body holding items varying from kitchen knives to cordless drills. I couldn't watch without feeling physically sick to my stomach. The men tore her apart limb from limb, stabbing at her torso and cutting her open. I take another glance to see one of the men was having sex with the mutilated corpse. I almost immediately retch and almost vomit over my keyboard but I gain control of myself before that happens. My heart was beating like crazy. The whole situation was so fucked and I was in way over my fucking head. By the time the men were finished, there was a literal stump of a human being left. Not that you could fucking call that human anymore. 
Her head was literally torn off the neck and stuffed into her body cavity along with one of her arms. If it weren't for the other weird sights that I had seen before this, I might not have stayed as long as I did. Three more people were brought onto the screen, all of them screaming for their lives and trying to escape. One of them is shot in the leg, the others stand there shaking in place, trying not to scream again. The man holding the sign walks up to the lens of the camera and stares into it. I see his black eyes, blood spattered across his face. I breathed faster and I actually had to look away. It was like he was staring right at me. He says something else in a foreign language, probably the same one as before. When he stops speaking, the chat window does the same. Hardly a single other post. Just a chat window awaiting some response. About 20 seconds pass of him just staring into the camera after speaking. Nothing happens at first. The chat then mentioned me and Nathan by our usernames. More of them spam our names in posts that take over the scrolling message board. As soon as they mentioned our aliases I started freaking out. I try to close the black windows but every time that I try the window says that the application is not responding. The live stream continues, the man staring at me and the messages prompting me to say something. One of the few comments in proper English pops up. He's asking us to choose which one to kill first. I freeze for about 5 seconds before unplugging my computer from the wall. I didn't care about anything anymore. I just wanted to leave the site and never come back. I sat there with a blank screen in front of me for a bit before pacing around the kitchen. I was done with it. I didn't sleep at all, I was too traumatized to even think about resting after what I had seen. At the time of this happening, I was thinking about reporting the site to the police, but I of all people know that they can't do anything to stop this. To think that more of these sites could exist, that more people are getting gunned down and mutilated for entertainment, is something that I can't fucking think about. Fuck. I spent two days talking to some close friends about this stuff, though I left out all the details and just said I'd seen something disturbing online. They all know what I do in my free time so they didn't think much of it since I'd mentioned snuff films and messed up sites before. They didn't know what Nathan and I had seen. I mustered up the courage to turn on my PC again and I was fucking relieved to see no sign of any viruses and most of all no black windows scattered on my desktop. I immediately went to check if Nathan had left me any messages on Rad. I had several messages from him with a few files attached to the second. I was hoping to talk this whole ordeal through with him but the files immediately caught my eye. The fucking attachments were pictures of me stolen from my Facebook and email. Pictures of my old school, university, and even my friends here. The messages after were my addresses, emails, online aliases, and even the names of my family members. My IP address was posted to the bottom and I realized how fucked I am. The last picture of me and my old girlfriend, with her IP address and details pasted on top of the picture. There's no fucking way that they tracked me down. I take a few minutes to pull myself together before writing back, what the fuck happened who are you, I didn't get a response and I still haven't to this day. He has all of my details. He knows everything about me and my family and I don't even know what else. I still don't know what has happened to him since I left that live stream. I can only pray that the information he has doesn't fall into the hands of those murderous insane motherfuckers who killed and desecrated dozens of people on the darkest part of the internet. I can't let them find me or those who I care about. I will never go back to that part of the internet again ever, it's not fucking safe for me or you or anyone. The police can't find them but they can find you. Don't try and find the site, don't try and report the site. They will do to you what they did to me and if you think that they won't find you then remember that I was fucking invisible. Do you want to take the chance that they won't find someone like you? Don't go onto the deep web and, for the sake of your humanity, never seek out the people who are behind this. They'll only find you too.